Hello there. My name's Ian Oberdorf from actually also known as Obi Miner. You're watching my channel. You see how I kind of blurred in. I have a green screen behind me, so you will see a lot of screw up in the effects. Um, in this video, I want to do a little tutorial, a tutorial, I'm sorry, on how to um, set up a MIDI board on your for VMix. VMix is a digital mixing software. In fact, I'll give you a quick peek at that. Um, here's kind of what what I'm looking at, except without me in the way. Let me pull me down. Whoops, wrong, wrong thing. Um, so this is what you're looking at. You can kind of still see me down in the uh, bottom corner here, or else you can kind of see another me, like uh, kind of up there. Um, so that's what you're looking at. The uh, that's a little zoom thing I have programmed. Um, so what I'm going to be teaching is how to set up a MIDI board. Uh, let's go ahead and bring the original backgrounds back up. Do this. There we go. Um, so what's the MIDI board? Well, I'm using, like a MIDI board could be anything. A MIDI board can be like a little joystick you use to fly uh, little planes in your computer. Or it could be like a little piano that you have plugged into your computer to do recordings. Um, that's If you actually look on eBay, that's mostly what you'll find. Um, so a MIDI device can be almost anything. It could be like a whole other keyboard as well, or just anything. Um, for my MIDI device, I had actually just got this not too long ago. This is a Newmark. Um, whoop, you can kind of see my screen coming in. Anyway, we'll ignore that for now. But this is a Newmark Edge. It is the size of a tablet in a way. Pretty cool. Um, I actually got that from a friend for all the help I did with him. He's, uh, he, uh, like that thing's actually $100. But what happened is he, um, I went to a store with him one time to check out some software because he wanted to get some microphones and stuff. I'm an audio engineer myself. Um, so what I did is, um, uh, I was walking around that store and I spotted the, uh, I spotted the stuff. I'm like, ooh, that's something I've been after. I want that thing. Um, I had asked him, like, hey, you think you can probably um, buy this here now? Because I didn't have the cash in my pocket. I knew I had some at home. I had asked him, hey, could you buy this for me and I'll pay you back when we get to my house? And he's like, oh, sure. I'll do that. Um, so he bought it. We were still at the music shop. We did get his hardware. He paid. He got me my little, MIDI, my little board. It's actually used with Virtual DJ. Um, except you don't get to use like the latest version. You have to go stick with number seven, Virtual DJ Seven. Um, but it works nice. If you you can use it in today's version, but either you have to pay ninety nine dollars, or you have to go to a, uh, or else you have to use it for only ten minutes. Honestly, I don't want to use it for only ten minutes. This is mainly so I can preview a song. I don't really do all the nice little mixing stuff, but. Um, I was just looking at videos online. And I saw someone else had stated like uh, how to how you can uh, connect a MIDI device to your VMix, and so I decided, you know what? Hey, let's do that. VMix isn't what I've been using, but I want to try to get into using it. Um, and I figured, like, hey, what better way to test it by actually doing a tutorial video on how to set it up? And so that's what I'm doing, which is how to set up a MIDI device. Um. So what we're going to be doing is programming our MIDI device to do different things. Like uh, right now, I'm um, on the little bottom switching board where you're going like from one song to the other, and I'm changing transition in the background. For me to get get out of there, I have to hit a whole nother key. I have to hit this uh, one, and then I also have to uh, make sure I'm on the other screen there, and then I press the one again. So that's how that works. Um, and so. We um, let's go ahead and start get started. Most people, what they want to work on is their T-bar. Uh, let me get out of here, and then I'm going to go to pull up the um, pull this back up. The T-bar is if you see, my cursor's on the screen. This is a T-bar. This is where you transition from one video to the other. So what we'll do, we're going to be transitioning from this video to this one. This is what is actually being seen. This is the um. Uh, this is actually like what I want to put over here. Um, so say we, we want to put um, that picture of me alone. Let's put uh, this picture 
on here instead. So we will hit, we're gonna select that image. Well, you can actually just click it down here instead of using my shortcuts. Like I can click here, which that was my opening you saw. Uh, you can click there, and then that's up on the preview. What you could do, you could just drag this over, and then you just have me in black, like with a black background. And you can still see it's really scratchy. I don't like that, but heck, we got to deal with it. Um, but we got to bring that back. So that's a video switcher. I set it up on my MIDI device or my new marked DJ mixer. And I can shift it over back and forth now. You can kind of see me kind of fading in in the background there. I kind of look like a ghost. Ugh, no. um, so, yeah, that's what you have there. Let's do... Uh, hmm. How do I want to do this? We want to... Um, oh, yeah, we want to learn how to program. Duh. So, here's, how, here's what you have to do. First off, you need to go up here to your settings. You're going to select your settings. All right, you can kind of see like an infinity of setting screens popped up there. Because, of course, if you're doing a desktop capture on your screen, you have all those going back. Next, you need to go to um, your shortcuts right here. So select your shortcuts. Now, you can see these are all my uh, shortcuts I put together. Everyone says MIDI on them. Now, how do we add them? Well, we're going to start out with the fader. And the function is going to be set fader, but you're going to understand that here in a second. So, first we're going to we'll remove that so nothing gets confused. Um, next time, we're going to be going all the way down my list that I set up, because these are kind of the most important transitions I had found. This might take a little while, but it's worth learning, like, what it's doing and then how you can use it. So, um, set fader. We will, uh, we're going to remove that. Yes. Okay, so we're going to start out by going down here to where it says add. We add. Next up, we will go to the find. Now, my thing's already been set up. So what you're going to have to do is when you hit find, it's going to come up here saying, like, um, are you wanting to connect a MIDI device? You're going to have to select that, and it's going to kind of set it up. Make sure your MIDI device is connected. Now, after you uh, after your mini device has been set up, it'll um, ask you to uh, find your, press a button on the keyboard or controller. So what you have to do is go to your setting, which for me it's my crossfader, and uh, go ahead and shift it. You see these digits coming up. So mini control change channel one note one velocity 127 one like that's just me flitching it back and forth all the way to the left all the way to the right right dead center uh, so just have it set in any setting just have it so that the thing knows where it's at I kind of kept it all the way to the max you can kind of have it all the way back down in zero but I'm just gonna leave it at max for now because that's how I first set it up um, hit OK now you're gonna see that'll change now if you try searching here ignore how it's already on there uh, what you have to do is just go all the way up through it try to find uh, your keypad so this is a keypad shortcut as well um, um, like this is actually my keyboard, all these buttons on my keyboard. Uh, we're going to ignore those for now. We already have our thing. We'll just double check that. Okay. All right. So it's on there. Next, we need to figure out the function. The function I said was set, fa um, sorry, set transition fader, I believe. Set fader. So we got to look in here, set fader right there. We'll select that. We don't have to really worry about a title or a description. These are more for notes if you need them. Um, so everything's set up. We can hit OK. Um, so now we're going to be all the way down at the bottom of the list. We're going to rebuild everything in this list until we're back to set fader being on the top because I want to show how everything is. So we're going to hit OK. Now our fader should be active again. Whoops. Did I transition myself in again? Uh, let's... Yes, I did. Oh, it's just for me crossfading, duh. Sorry. Um, but yeah, so there you go. Now we have our crossfader. You kind of see it shifting, and as I shift it, if I was bringing it all the way over, you see I keep fading in because I still have my, uh, I have the green screen up here. So there we go. So that's going to be shifting and bringing me in. We can actually test it with a different image. We'll bring up, um, 
the background that I like to have here. You see that popped up there. Now we'll just slide it over. There we go. Yep. So there you go. That's how that works. Um, we can go ahead and bring my other image back up here. Um, now from here on out, I'm going to be using my uh, shortcuts that I have on my keypad. So it's just a lot easier to shift with. I can just use that keypad. You're going to be learning that next. Uh, well, not next, but um, we're going to be getting there. So next up, let's go to our, um, let's bring our mini device back out. You can still see me in this little screen. Uh, so next up, let's go to the, um, we don't need to pay attention to that right now. You don't need that. Um, anyway, let's go back to our settings. What's next in my list is the shortcuts. Play and pause. Now play and pause, that is what we will use for our, um, the, um, uh, opening that I had like you have a video on your you want to add a video onto your thing the play and pause is needed so we will go here you can see the input is preview the inputs are just like to kind of play with the bottom here uh, so you have your input up like you hit play and pause and you have it set to where it'll play and pause your input one which is my video over here um, you want it on preview because that's where you're actually going to be testing your videos at. You want to preview your videos while they're up there. So we will go ahead and um, we'll go ahead and remove this again. Play and pause. All right. So we're adding. Now I had um, a play and pause button that, like my bottom left play and pause button, is um, a um, well. It's a DJ controller, so you have a play and pause button. You have two on there. One's on the left, one's on the right. So I have my left one is going to represent doing that part. So we will go to uh, hit my left keypad. You see it comes out channel 2, velocity not 59. If I push in, it comes out to 127. Um, all that matters is you hit it once. So it's selected. We're going to our play and pause. Um start playing pause or you know play pause there it is play and pause function all right just like before we just go ahead and hit ok the input has to be set to preview or else you're gonna have to um, you're gonna have to make a whole bunch of those playing pauses like one for every single camera you added so okay there um so now we have our play and pause let's go ahead and test it like we would be you could just go through this entire list and not have to really test anything but if you want to test it all mainly what i'm doing is i'm kind of sampling out like what's really going on um like what are these controls um like later on we're going to be able to we're going to be learning how to do things like this these transitions like how do you set these transitions which these transitions i just did they are these three so zoom and i didn't click Wipe. Oh, that's a wipe. Oh, that's because I hit the... That's the zoom. <laughs> zoom. Wipe. And cube zoom. I kind of like the cube zoom. I think it's pretty cool. But um, anyway, let's go back to uh, what we're actually trying to focus on here. The play and pause. So we're going to pull up our productions tab. Now we're going to test this out. Um, Let me reset it. Okay, so our bar is over here. You can kind of, I think you can scrape along here, trying to decide where you want to start in your video. But we're going to have it set up back here. Um, we'll go ahead and hit the play pause button. And it's being previewed. Pretty cool. Um, so pause that. Play it. Kind of tells us we've got to how much time's up. So that opening video is only 10 seconds. We can restart it. Now I'm also going to show you a restart key. So if I hit play here, pause, restart. There we go. Now we're back to the beginning. So we're going to go to that key here soon. Um, so play pause works fine. Go back to our shortcuts again. Set the master volume. Now what's the master volume? The master volume is down here. As I turn this, I turn a little knob. If you look at the top here, let me go ahead and cancel this out. We'll go up here. Here's our master volume going up and down. 
I think I need to figure out how to change the recording volume. Do we go... Hold on. No, we didn't die down. Okay. So, the... Uh, what do we have here? Uh, those are just different things. Yeah. Um, so, we have our... Uh, Master volume, apparently it's not really affecting what's going on here. I think it's more for your uh, other sources. So like when my video was playing, if I have that playing here, I think I have like a master volume control over that. So I'm sure if we tested it right now, there might be something else going on. Um, let's go back down to my recording settings here so I can watch like I'm bouncing you can see my voice jumping here um so we will go to our uh sorry i just have to look down here tom there's my dog my little poodle down here um so we are working on our master volume we go settings shortcuts of course set master volume and you saw how that works so we don't really have to do this I'm going to leave, well, I still want to redo it because we want to put everything back down on the bottom. I want to kind of set things back to how I had them. Um, actually, I think you can drag them. No, we're not doing that. Um, so, add, find, you kind of play with your volume knob that you're going to be using. As you see, this one's almost like the other things. I'm not using like the big the center volume knobs that go up and down that kind of adjust the volume on each one of your individual channels. This one's the master volume. Like it actually even says master on my mixer. So we will uh, hit OK. Function is set master volume. So set master volume, not just set volume. Um master volume yeah it's up here set master volume there it is so there you go we're gonna hit OK on that next we have the restart key now if you remember when I was playing the video over here how the video like I had it to where the video was reset and stuff like, I actually even showed you how I didn't do it. Like, you didn't see it on my controller over here. Um, let's go ahead and select that again. Uh, restart. We'll remove that. Yes. Add. Oop, not there. Find. We want to select my restart button, which is actually my left Q. And you can see as I push, the velocity comes up. That don't matter. So... We have our that set, and then just find reset. Like it doesn't say anything special. Like look, there's many functions, but we're not going through this entire list because honestly, half of them you don't need. So we select restart. Now preview. That's what we wanted on, but these are also uh, these are kind of our things that we're using. These are like that's my webcam that you're seeing in the bottom left. Desktop capture. That's actually what you're seeing on the screen right now. The productions, um, that's the uh, the little video, and then images, that's the um, little background I had up here at times. Um, input five, that's like another video source, but I'm using the free version of the VMix because honestly, I'm not making profit off of this. So, um, what better way to do it than for free? Because you're not making profit, you're just doing it as a hobby or for fun. So you only get four videos, or four sources, so four inputs. Um, it could be four cameras, it can be um, just four different sources. And as you saw, I had a video, I have the camera, I have the uh, background image that I added, and then you have the desktop capture. So I'll show you how you can make those shortcuts later. But um, So we have that all set up, just leave it on preview. Assign shortcut to input number. That's for if you're going to use it like in different versions. Like think every time you do this, um, you're, it's not going to be saved as uh, like HD webcam. It's not going to always be saved as desktop. It's not always going to be saved as video well, productions. So it's not always going to be saved the same. Like probably next time I could have the desktop be the first one. And then I could have the second one be the webcam. So that's how that works. 
So, okay to that. So that's been set, and um, you kind of saw what it did already, how I had the play and pause running, this video ran, and then when I paused it, it was like halfway through, then I hit that uh, Q button and it went back to the beginning. So that's how that works. Headphone volume, that's going to be almost like setting a master volume. Just figure out like what you're going to be using to transition. I'm not using any headphones right now, and... I don't know if you will too, but it's kind of useful to have preset. The um, I already have a head like the headphones volume already set up. Honestly, we don't have to worry about that. There's no way to prove it. So let's go to the preview inputs. As you see, the preview inputs. So as you see, these are assigned to an input, like how I showed you earlier with a preview. Um. Yeah, I would probably. Like I did earlier, I would have transitioned that, but forget it that for now. Forget what I said earlier. But for now, we're going to work on our preview the input. Let's go ahead. Let's go ahead and show you what that is. Previewing input, what I can do is I have each input assigned to a different channel. So this one's set up like on one button. This one's set up on two. This one's set up on three. This one's set up on four. My button has like a row of six, or my not my button. The the board is set up with um something that says sample uh, one, sample two, sample three, sample four, sample five, sample six. So I want to use those buttons because it actually has a number on them. Um, and I did set it up for six because I don't know, probably someday I might get the full version of the software. Sorry if I keep itching or scratching my nose. I kind of have like a little itch over here. But um, so sample one, I'll hit that and then we're going to be going on to this video. Ready? There, sample one. Sample two is the screensaver. As you see, we have them both. Like, I can even do this fader, and nothing happened. Um, sample three, the production. We go ahead and test that uh, restart because this bar is all the way over with the Q button that I set up. There we go. And sample four, the vmix. Um, I will show you how to have your transition up and then making a uh, making your video appear on top. So if you're doing like a game and you want to have your game in the background while you're sitting on front of it, or you could probably you probably also want to have yourself shrink. There are settings in here where you can, or actually um, settings on the image you want to sit on top of to where you can actually have it set to where you're like taking up just a little corner. You don't want to be taking up the entire screen. Um, pull me back off there. We'll go back to um, the full screen here. Um, so we will now do the. Uh, oh, we're in the middle of something already. We're going to work on the um, inputs. Just how I just switched my camera there. So go to settings, shortcuts. Um, how about from now on, I'm going to kind of show how to change things. How did that happen? Things kind of changed the order again. I don't know what just happened there. But, um, all right. So preview and input. I'm going to just hit edit here. Like you already, you're probably used to the ad already. We'll just go to edit. And of course, you're going to find your source. And I already did. You go, to, you're going to find preview input. Now, here's where it where the story will change, okay? You only need to worry about this on uh, this setting. Just make sure you have the function set to preview input. And then, for your button, make sure you're set up on the input you want to use. So, I wanted this to be my number one. And, of course, you see, like, it's input five, then you have these. Input five, images, productions, capture then webcam so five four three two one so i wanted this example one like the button was example one so i want to have it set to the first thing that showed up which isn't going to be number one of course the number will still show up at the end like desktop capture wasn't titled number two it's just number two productions isn't number three it's just number three images jpeg is number four i don't have it saved as images jpeg four I don't know. I think that would kind of screw it up. 
So just select your whatever your first source is, select that, and then hit OK. Now you're going to do the same for the rest of your things, like input two. You edit that, preview. Make sure you have it to preview input. Make sure you make sure you did select a different button because you can't have two two buttons doing the same thing, or else nothing's going to happen. So if you have two buttons doing the same exact thing, nothing will happen. So that's set up like that. Um, and make sure you have the uh, your input set up as well. Actually, didn't I just say that? Make sure you have it set up as capture two. Well, not capture two. Just have it set up as input two. Um, and I didn't state this with number one, but make sure you sign the shortcut to input number. Now, why was that? Because it is the sort that is going to be um, like not, nothing's ever going to always be the same. You're not always going to be on the like your webcam won't always be number one. You could probably have your desktop capture being number one, or you can have another camera being number one. So just assign shortcut to the input number. Don't assign it. Don't just select that source and then because then next time it won't even work you're going to be like why isn't it changing i set this up just right so and just do that all the way through and um and like i said i had six inputs if you if i pull that list back up we'll go to my input six here if i pull that list all the way up you're going to see we can go up to 100 inputs now to do that you're going to have to buy a special type of mixer and I believe, well, a special type of MIDI device. Um, and there are MIDI devices that are ginormous. I've actually been inside of a news broadcast van um, that was at a at one of my local high school's football games. I'm actually a uh, I'm actually the message board operator and the and the um, message board scoreboard everything operator at the football field. So. Um, after the game, I had asked if I could go take, if I asked the guy if I could take a look inside the van, because I thought it looked pretty awesome, and he has a mixing board, like a real, real video mixing board, not a little, not a little toy mixing board, not like what we're messing with, but his board was, um, uh, how big was that thing? It's probably like the length of my table that I'm sitting at, which is, uh, no, it was probably even longer than that. I'd say it was probably five to six feet wide with unlimited buttons. I think it was crazy, but each button kind of served a purpose. Some of them were to transition in like a overflow image like this, where I'm sitting on top of you right now. Um, like it's mainly for like when there's a news title on the bottom. Um, so that's what that is. The... Uh, so that's how you want to have that set up. So you have a lot of channels. So we'll go ahead and skip that. Um, start and stop recording. Now, I'm not going to actually sample this button. Like, I'm not going to touch it. I'm just going to show what it would be doing. Um, and you should already know how to set it up, of course. You just select the button you want to sign it to, and then go to the settings, set and stop, start and stop recording. Oh, excuse me. Um, and then you go down here to where it says record, or actually, um, no, just set, assign it, and then of course, uh, save it. Um, you're going to hit okay. Um, let's actually do this for the next one is the stream. So you have the record button and then you have the stream button. For me, I have the right side of my little mixer that I showed you at the beginning of the video. I have its play and pause button be what starts and stops the recording. And I don't want to stop this recording because I want to kind of keep it going. I don't want to have to do a whole bunch of video editing. Of course, we do have this black screen screw up going on. Um, but for this next step, I have the stream key set up. External, I think that's going to be like an external video source, like a video. like Or actually another screen. Say I have a, um, I'm in a church or something. And I want to send this video to the big projector screen where I'm at some other event. External, I never set it up yet. Um, I'm, yeah, I'm, I, might have, I might have signed that to something here. I might have an idea. 
But for now, we're just going to keep it shut off. We'll leave that shut off until I'm actually at a church. I actually might be going to a church here soon to work. Like, I, I'm not saying I don't go to church yet. I have huge faith. Um, the, uh, but this church, they actually want to be broadcasted online and stuff. And they want me to do it. Um, I was originally working with a different church that they already do a lot of broadcasting stuff. They actually even use real mixing boards. Like their mixing board, if you're, if you might be sitting in front of a laptop. Imagine your laptop and a half in wide, or in width. I mean, your laptop and a half in width, and then you had a, a room full of TV monitors. Um, they never really let me mess with their mixing board, but um, they did kind of show me like how it works, like because I knew the the uh, church director or the church tech director myself. Um, the main reason why I'm going to be the tech director at this other church is because um, my friend, he actually already knew I specialized in this stuff. He sees I had, like, my own PA system. Um, I'm advanced with computer technology. Um, uh, I, he's actually the one that took me to go get his microphones. He had me set them up for him. He's doing meetings um, for online marketing that he does, and he had me come and try to set up their PA system, make sure everything's working just right. Um, and then I'm also planning to use this software on their meetings. I plan to probably set, have it set up to where I have uh, probably number four here will be um, probably like their logo or probably an ad, like saying uh, we are, like it's going to say their title. We'll say that. It's going to say their title. And then like while well, I have them being broadcasted on, uh, they're on the screen, so they're up on the screen, but then they bring up a special product. I can go, uh, I'll have them pulled up, and then there's their product right there. Um, of course, we're not, well, if you didn't see me shrink there, that's going to be coming up here soon. You see me kind of zooming in and out. Um, that was kind of a mishap. I was trying to reach for something else. Of course, people aren't really going to always see me doing this stuff, so... But um, I'm trying to reach for this. Bring the desktop capture back up. Oh, actually, you didn't see it. That was kind of dumb of me. Here, let me do that again. If we go to uh, example one here. What, what I was talking about doing there was actually this. I was kind of zooming in and out. Kind of see how my face is getting so huge. Yeah. I see you. No. Um, yeah. That's coming up here soon. Just forget about that now, for now. Um, so, we have... Uh, so, I was talking about the transitions here. Um, like what we could do. Uh, plus, I told a little bit of my story. Let's go back to what we are really trying to work on. The stream. Now, I already set up a YouTube broadcast. that was supposed to start around 11 o'clock. But it's um, 11.48 now. I was supposed to start 48 minutes ago. I wasn't planning on taking forever trying to make sure everything was running correctly. So let's go ahead and um, pull up the, uh, the stream settings. Configure stream settings. Now, destination custom RTMP server. Let's see. Apparently, they don't have YouTube. Well, you can see all these different sources they already have preset, but um, YouTube is allowed. All you need is the URL, and a URL. I will pull up uh, my YouTube, my YouTube, which I had sitting on my second monitor here. This is YouTube here. Um, your primary server URL. So you're going to select this, and you will control and copy it. Control and copy, or else you can just highlight and right click and then hit copy but I already did that um, so we'll put that back on our second screen first now alright so put in your URL you're gonna just hit control and V and there we have it now you have a stream name and key now this is this is gonna be my first time but I do know how to do this because I've done like so many open, I've done so many broadcasting things this is my first time with this software usually I always used OBS open broadcaster server or software. Um, I'm not going to pull that up right now. Like I could, but I kind of figured out like using more than one uh, 
more than one broadcasting software kind of was jacking up in a way. But um, go ahead and highlight your stream name. Control copy that. Or uh, right click and copy. Um, go ahead and put that back out of my way. Go to the stream name of key. Control V or else right click and, right -click and paste. Control V is the paste version. It's not Control P. Because if you press Control P, that's actually for printing. And if you're um, doing like a uh, Word document and you hit Control P, like to paste it, you're going to be printing out. You want it to be Control V because print and paste. V means paste. So we have that all set up. Make sure your um, other settings are set to your um, main settings. You kind of want to have your bottom set to FM. FFMPEG. Um, use hardware encoder. I'm not, I'm not really sure how that works. I don't really mess with that. So we will save and close that. Now I'm going to go ahead and come over to my um, YouTube channel here. Uh, right now I have the thumbnail as our number four here. Um, so this is what the thumbnail is set up as. Um, we will, let's actually set this up so it's actually being broadcasted. First off, I will hit the, I'm going to bring up my uh, YouTube again. I'll show you what's going on on here. So here's our YouTube. It's on full screen. So I kind of have everything set up. I don't have my captioning set up and stuff. Start the encoder, start sending us your video stream and live control. Room. We're getting there in a second. So main camera is all set up. Everything set up. Make sure you have um, basic congestion settings the way you want them. There is like an easier way to do this if you're going to be using like um, a different software. But we're doing this. The I titled it VMix Live Stream Test. I'm going to have this kind of pasted down below um, to where you can come take a look at how it worked out. We'll save our changes. Okay. Cards, those are something else. Cards are just like um, little covers and stuff. And you can see the, I think our stream is kind of running already. I don't know. Live stream is starting soon. Blah, blah, blah. Um, add a card. You have like video or playlist. Promote another channel, a link to a website or video or playlist. Well, I just said that. So um, let's go to our live control room here. We are not receiving data from your encoder. Well, how do we do that? Let's go back to our vMix. And like I said, we just set up our stream. Let's go to see how we set up a key. So, go to our shortcuts again. You can see me down in the bottom corner again. We have um, the start and stop streaming. So that's what your setting is going to have to be. And I set that up under my Q button, because think, we're queuing up to go on there. So what better than hitting Q? So it's my right Q button is going to be how we go on there. My left Q button is how we reset the video that is selected. So start and stop streaming. Um, let's actually test this for its first time. Ready? We are going, I'm going to set this up to where it's, uh, let's actually hit the queue. We're going to have it start streaming. And then I'm going to pull up the, um, pull up the go live. And when I hit go live, we're going to be, I'm going to put the V mix. Or actually, no, I'm going to be putting the productions up. So let me set my productions to where it's coming up. Because I want to have this, I want to have all my videos kind of going with this little OB minor productions. Um, because that's kind of my little title. Um, and like during, if you watch my Minecraft videos, which is why I call myself OB Miner, you'll see that the um, every video kind of starts out like this. Wow, this video is taking forever. I'm such a blabbermouth. Um, so let's go ahead and start. We hit Q. Stream is yellow. I'm guessing that means good. All right, let's go. Oh, red. It's set. We are receiving info, as you see. Let's go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and bring our, um, we're going to hit, we're going to actually bring in our, we're going to change this transition real fast. I want to have it be our actual
thumbnail on the cover. So I'm going to set this back up. We're going to go to our thumbnail, which is the vMix. All right, we're going to set that up. All right, so you already saw how the streaming part's working. I'm going to hit preview now. All right. Um, I had to do a jump here because the um, the encoder was being a pain in the butt. Um, if you see our stream is red again, we can go ahead and open this. Apparently, YouTube, you need to make sure your settings are 854 by 480. I can't get into these settings where um, just make sure 854 over 480. Um, then you could start here or else you can start down there. We can go ahead and save and close that. Um, let me go ahead and pull up our YouTube again. Now we can go ahead and hit start streaming, but first I'm going to be hitting that next, and then you're going to see the video pop up live. Um, and this video will be, you'll see a shortcut to it. Um, let's go ahead and, I want to make the video be number uh, three here. And if you didn't also see, the cap, the desktop capture had to be switched from here over to here. That's also where you need to have your numbers set up. So if I would have had it saved without the number, uh, I'd actually be, um, I'd be hitting two to get over to this. But I have it set up still to where it's going by number. So if I hit two, we're going to this. Um, so right now I want to have example three. Um, this is what I want to have over here right now. So we're just watching that. And then I'm going to have my video pre uh, set up to play. Um, let's go ahead and start the stream. See how we're doing here. Stream is starting now. All right, this is just a test. Um, the uh, this is a video being shown on YouTube. In fact, here it is right here. Um, here's our live video. As you see, this is what happened. This is a review of everything that just happened here. So while you saw me doing certain things on my desktop, this is what we see. In fact, this is a replay right now because. There's a 30 second transition as you see, whoops, in fact I'm even hearing myself now, um, yeah, you're going to be hearing so many of me if I keep that turned up, um, that happened for a little while there, um, but I fixed it, thank God, it's been fixed, and I don't mean that in a bad way, um, so we can go ahead and get rid of this, so there is our stream, um, if you're watching the stream, go to the video that I have pasted below so you can see why this stream actually happened. Um, so yeah, you will understand what am I really doing with this video. Uh, and from all of us here on the screen, because there's so many of me, <laughs> uh, thank you for watching. Now, not for you that are watching the real video that's really going on. It's for you that are watching the... Um, the little test that was written. Um, and for the rest of you, let's go back to what we were actually trying to do. Apparently, this video was edited because of what happened. Um, we can go back to uh, pulling me back off the screen. Back to how we were working. Uh, and I am canceling the this video that you're watching right now. If you're watching the recording. So, the video has been stopped. You can still see that um, the video still is rolling on my screen here. Oh, and then it just cuts out. So, everyone, you guys got to see that. Here's the live stream test here. I can click on that and then we'll replay it. But that's going to be a shortcut that you'll go to later. Um, so, remember that video was pasted below. Now, you did kind of see parts of it. Um, 
and I think it's doing a replay right now, or else it's, yeah, it just did a replay. Okay, um, so let's get back to what we're doing here. We're trying to program our MIDI board for the for the software, and like I said, we have a transition already set up. We have the stream, which I actually didn't disable stream. I'm going to hit that stream button that we set up. Um, record is still running. I'm not stopping that. And, of course, you see it's been recording for over an hour. But that is due to the fact that I had a lot of issues trying to get that live stream up. And a big portion was cut out of this video. So let's go to our... Um, we'll go to the... Where to go, where to go. Playlist or oh, that's where we want to go. We go to settings, shortcuts. Um, we just did the streaming. Let's talk about these transitions. A transition is where we're switching screens. We're going from our current screen to the other screen. So we're going from. Uh, Transitioning is where you use this bar going left and right. So like this is a transition now. This is a transition. Uh, this is a transition. That's a transition. And that's a transition. Now there's many transitions to choose from. They're all right here. Oh no, my cursor wasn't set up. Um, yeah, here, you know what? Let me fix this cursor issue real fast um, so I can actually show you what we're really doing here um, yeah you know what forget the cursor it's not needed you just won't see a cursor here you just have to imagine where it is by me hovering over things all that matters you see it's highlighted um, let's go back to our settings so highlight your settings up there um, back to shortcuts like you it's highlighted in green here now um, so transitions now why am I starting at two three and four because transition number one is our slot the first thing we set up the slider bar so transition number one is the sliding bar transition two will be the second box that we see here which is highlighted well it's not highlighted the one that's labeled zoom right now is our second transition transition number two transition three is wipe and transition four is cube zoom so to program those just do the same thing you did before select your thing I'm gonna hit edit here for your sampler um, hit find um, that should be highlighted there yeah um, so hit find then you go to your transitions make sure you choose train well you can do a shortcut here where you select transition and then you do transition to three four or else if you want to if you have so many buttons on your board you can actually hit any of these fit transitions that are above, like this stinger two, stinger one, and then all the way above, or set fader. Set fader is actually our crossbar. Um, so cancel that out. Um, so if you're like if you're like me and you don't want to have to have like four buttons to work with, you can just work with three, and then your slider. The top bar, the slider is always going to go off your first bar. So just have it assigned to transition two, three, and four, because your slider's number one. The um, so I'll close that out. We'll go to um, fade to black. Now here's a sampler of fade to black. I'm gonna hit it right now. I think. No, yep, there. We should be faded out. It should be a black screen. Although on my side, it's still I can still see everything. I can see what's on preview or on the um, what's supposed to be seen. I've never tested this yet to like actually see what everyone else sees. All I see is the what's actually up to be shown. I'll go ahead and hit that again, and then this FTB is going to stop flashing. So that's what fade to black is just doing a black screen. Um. Let me go ahead and show that. FTB, if I hit my uh, button that I assigned FTB, it's going to start flashing red, and that's supposed to be signaling that the um, people were just seeing nothing but black. It's supposed to be a black screen. I don't know if I'm even being heard right now, but my recording box does say I am. I'll pull the FTB back up. 
and then it's that's no longer flashing. So we will go back to um, our settings because there's one more setting I assigned that it would be pretty good if you have a camera operator that and or if you're going to be operating the camera with one hand while you're operating this with the other. So you have your mixer over here. Like my mixer sitting over here, so that's why I look that way. So you have your mixer, but then you have a camera set up on a tripod, and you're trying to operate that while you're working with your mixer. So you have that camera trying to be set up, and then you're paying attention to this other camera. And then once you have your camera set up, you want to be able to be able to zoom into it. Like if you see right now, my face is like zooming or going away. I'm all the way up to where you see my eye. I see you. Or else you can be all the way out to where you're a little tiny thing. I'm like, wait, I'm on the way. I'm real tiny. I'm tiny. Why am I so small? No, I'm big. I'm huge. No, I'm just that. That's me. Okay. Um. So what was that shortcut? That is actually the set zoom. Um. And that's actually our second to last one. Set zoom. Um. Just find a knob. A knob or a bar that goes up and down, like from what I said, it was my left, um, my left channel volume knob, or my left channel volume slider on my mixer board, like it's the thing right to the right of the um, um, jog wheel that goes up and down. So that's just a little, that's a slider. Um, when I push that in, like up, it's zooming all the way in, and then when it's all the way at the top, I'm all the way zoomed in, and you can't see my whole body anymore. You can't even see my mouth. Well, now you can. Aha. Uh -huh. No. Um, we could bring that all the way down, but um, you don't want to go all the way to the bottom, or else if we're all the way at the bottom, we're back to normal size. So all the way at the bottom, we're at normal size, but then as you start bringing it up, start getting closer and closer so if you're operating a second camera you can use this as you're zooming instead of using the um, actual zoom on your camera or say you have a camera that doesn't even have a zoom so just assign that to a knob or a slider depends on what type of board you're using the MIDI controller I saw in the video it was like this nine channel board like probably that wide and it had like nine sliders, and then it had a play and pause button on the side. Um, it looked kind of interesting. And finally, we have the overlay input one. Overlaying input one, well, that's actually just um, overlaying. You're overlaying on top of something, and I have it set to preview. Just have it set to preview, or else I think there's a way you can actually have it overlaying... Um, overlaying on here. Let me actually see that. If I hit this, does it overlay? No, nope, just overlays on the preview. Um, or actually doesn't overlay the preview. Um, so what that does is we have my um, shortcuts up again. Uh, overlay input one. So overlaying, that just means you're putting your video of yourself over top of your um, image, which right now is desktop capture one. So I want to make my, uh, I want to put my head back on top of the desktop capture because I'm working with a green screen here. Like I have this green screen behind me. So we'll go ahead and cancel that out. So I want to make this image on the left side be over on the right side. Well, my right side. Actually, it's your guys' it's right too, actually. So I want to make my preview image go on top of the other image. So I make sure that that preview, the image I want on top of the other is in preview, like it's highlighted yellow. Then I will hit the button I assigned to make it overlay, which on this on my board I have it set up to be uh, Q1, Q number one. Um, like let me go ahead and pull this board back up so you can see it again. Um, these three buttons here, these are one, two, three. So if I hit Q when I'm in a song. These would pull up, um, highlighted. Oop, my, you just saw my green screen. It looked gray because of how I was trying to transition it to black. Um, so you just saw that. It's actually because of a shadow. I think that that happens. Like when I was when I was lifting that up, a big shadow was being emitted. Like, I actually have a shadow here. Yeah, see, there's a shadow back here causing the screen to screw up. 
See that? It's because of where the light is. The light's up here. So they're kind of like up in there. So that's why that's happening. So I want to make my uh, image appear over top. So I had it already set up to where I'm transitioned on top. This is actually what I did during that YouTube video that we just had up. Um, if I want to disable it, I still have to make sure that uh, my video is up on the top the uh, top side there. Uh, my top left. My left. And uh, then I just go ahead and hit the button. Like as you see, this video that's on right now is up there. So I hit, I hit that button and it's gone again. Now say I had uh, input 3, vMix, now what happens then, it completely takes the screen back over. Now if I go back to uh, my sample 1 and then I do that, it's going to reset. Like It's just going to get rid of the vMix and put this on top instead. And I could have multiple, uh, like also something else you can do, you could put a little, under, uh, little title underneath here. Um, that's pretty easy to do, but... I just showed you all the cues that I kind of liked having set up on my board so far. Like we had the T-bar. Kind of sliding left and right. In fact, actually, let me pull my head off of here so you can see what I'm talking about. The T-bar. As I slide that left and right, I'm zooming in. Um, then you had your uh, you had your transitions. You had the fade, which is um, using the T-bar. Um, you had your zoom, which is another button that you signed. Um, it doesn't have to be zoom though. Let me tell you this. Um, it doesn't have to be zoom. You can actually set these buttons to anything. You have fade, zoom, wipe, slide, fly, cross zoom, fly, rotate, cube, cube zoom, vertical wipe, vertical slide, merge, stinger, stinger 2. Let's see what the stinger looks like. Well... I don't really see anything up with the stinger. Um, what's stinger two? I think stingers, stinger two is just a. I think those are just a different type of fading. Um, you had like just different transitions. We had the fly. Whoa, flying in. Here I come. <laughs> uh, that, yeah, and I just hit the button personally, like here. We'll just select it, and then I just flew in. Now, why did it? How do you control that timing? Is the duration 500 milliseconds? If I want to make that take a second, then I just change that to one. But that's also where you have your fade bar. So you have that set up on the top. Now the fade bar only replies to your top knob. So none of these, none of these three will actually be controlled by this. What I could do, I have it set to fly, and we just slide that slowly. Or else I can slide this nice and slow. I can actually go real slow. There we go. So that's that. Um, right now I just have that set of fade just to cross in and out. Um, your zoom, that was another button. Um, just zooming in. Now that can be assigned as well. Um, then your wipe. Just wiping across the screen. Go back here. There's my wipe. There's a wipe. Um, cube zoom. I thought this one looks pretty awesome. I kind of would like to make this my big one. Just boxing in and out. Yeah, pretty cool. Um, so there's that. And then your fade to black. And it should be black screen right now, but I still see everything. Um, so there's your fade to black. Next up, you have your uh, um, input selections. So, input one coming up. Uh, input two, which was the video that you see again. I'm tired of showing this to you guys. Then your input three, um, input four, which is the desktop capture. So, you have one, two three and then of course four um next up you have your uh um fade to black oh uh, your zoom i think that's good for using with certain cameras or else a camera operator who kind of sucks you have a master volume which is down in the bottom corner here you see the 
volume slider going up and down. There is also a uh, headphone volume setting available as well, but I'm not wearing any headphones, so I didn't really explain that. You have your record button, which that's uh, that's something you assign. Um, your stream button, that was something you assign, and that took a little while to kind of work. I kind of damaged this whole video. Um, what else was there? Um, I think that's actually it. I don't really know of anything else. So, um, I guess, uh, thank you for watching the, uh, this video. Um, I hope you, uh, I hope you enjoyed learning how to uh, set up your MIDI device on your vMix. Um, here's the, here's my controller set up. I, I'll go ahead and point you my buttons and yes, the, um, screen's going to jack up here again. Yeah, just do it like this. Uh, we had my, uh, my slider sitting right here. In fact, like we'll just slide that in. Um, my zoom, that's uh, right here. You see the zoom. In fact, we'll just zoom in right on that. So there's the zoom. Um, my master volume up here. There's my master. My um, headphones. I'm sorry if my voice isn't coming through right again. Um, what else did I have? So, um, here's my overlays. If you know how I'm in an overlay right now, actually, we can go ahead and get me out of here. Somehow I'm still there. That's weird. Oh, there's our sam our reason. Yeah, so the overlay. Um, my uh, input selections. These three, and then these. Uh, these three. Um, and yeah, there's still more buttons I could assign in the future. I wanted, I wanted to kind of fix this one up to be a rewinding and fast forwarding wheel. Um, same with that one. Um, cause this, the software actually does allow like, uh, instant replays in a way. So I'm not really sure how the instant replay works yet, but it should work good. Um, well, thank you for watching. I hope you will subscribe to my videos. Um, join me on my adventures in Minecraft. I uh, know this, that Minecraft adventure, they are not... That map that's played on is never played um, unless if it's being broadcasted live. Um, thank you for enjoying... Or thank you for watching this video. Um, please subscribe. Bye.